Did you know it's possible to build a Google Maps clone in just a few minutes? Let me show you how. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now in this video, we're going to be building out this Google Maps clone you can see on the right hand side of my screen. You can see that we can enter a destination such as London. And let's come in here and we're going to say Manchester as our destination. And you can see it gives us directions between these. We can do driving directions, we could do walking directions, we could do cycling directions. We could even, you know, zoom into one of the actual turns on the directions. So we can essentially build out a complete Google Maps clone. And this project is actually straight from my JavaScript simplified course, which is coming out very soon. So you can use the link down in the description, javascriptsimplified.com. Enter your email if you want to be notified when it releases, or if you're from the future, you can go check out that link and get the course right now because it should be available. So to get started with this Google Maps clone, we're going to be using something called Mapbox. And you can come in here to Mapbox. You just need to create an account with Mapbox. And once you create an account, you're going to be saying where do you want to use Mapbox, whether it's the web, iOS, Android, Unity. In our case, we're going to be using this on the web. We can just click on this web link here and we can say whether we want to use the Mapbox CDN or if we want to use a modular bundler. For our case, we're just going to use the CDN because it's going to be easier and quicker to get started with. And it says we need to include these scripts. So to get started, let's create an index.html file. Just get the boilerplate in there with exclamation point and hitting tab. And then we can copy these script files over to here. So now we have access to the Mapbox script files and the CSS files inside of our JavaScript. Let's just change this to Google Maps clone. There we go. Once we've done that, we can just click next. And it says now here we're going to add the map to our site. Let's just copy this, paste this into our body. As it says, we're going to be modifying this code pretty heavily in just a little bit. But for now, that's all we need. And then we click next and it essentially says you're done. So if we just open this up with live server, we should just wait a couple seconds and it'll appear over on the right hand side. And you can see that we have map box being open. And right now it just zooms into essentially coordinate zero, zero. And you can see we have a map, we can navigate around the map, we can look at it wherever we want. Essentially, we have a movable map, which is great. But I want to make this map full screen because right now it just takes up a small portion of the screen. So to do that, I'm just going to put some styles in here for our map. And this div already has an ID map. So we can just say map. We want the height to be whoops, 100 view height and the width to be 100 view width. And let's just get rid of these hard coded styles. Save that. And now we have a full screen map. And let's just make the body have no margin. Whoops. Margin zero. And there we go. Completely full screen map, just like we want, just like we have over here. So now what I want to do, instead of writing all of my code inside of here, inside of our body, I want to create a new script.js file. Let's just import that script.js file up here. We'll just come in here and say script js and we're going to defer this just so it loads after our body we're going to take all the code inside of here and just copy it over and then we can get rid of this script tag and if we save both these files we should get the exact same result okay that's good to know our results are exactly the same so now let's take a look at this code really quickly to see what's going on you can see we have this mapbox gl object this is being brought in from these mapbox scripts that we copied over let me just expand this so it's easier to see and then we have a creation of a new Mapbox GL map. We're passing at the ID of our element, our div element here, where we want the map to be appended to, this map here. And we're passing a style, which is essentially the type of map we want, which in our case is this street view map. So if we zoom in, you can see that we can see all the different streets for all the different cities, which is perfect. You'll also notice up here, we're setting our access token equal to this string. And this comes from your actual account. If we go and view our account, if I can find that, here we go. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, once this loads, you'll see your access token here. You can create new ones or just use this default one. I'm going to be resetting my access token at the end of this video. So you're going to need to use your own access token, but it's super easy to create a Mapbox account and get an access token. So now in order to make this more like Google Maps, the first thing I want to do is actually zoom in on my current location, because right now we're kind of zooming into the bottom here of Africa and pretty much in the middle of the ocean right now, really not a super useful location to be. What I want to do is get my current location. So in order to do that, we're going to be using the navigator.geolocation.html. 
that get current position API. Essentially, this is the API that allows you to get your location. And whenever you see a pop-up that says this browser wants to view your location, this is exactly what they're doing. And this takes three different properties. It takes a success. We're going to call this a success location function, an error location function, and it's going to take an option for optional parameters. In our case, we want to just enable high ad accuracy. So we'll say enable high accuracy true. That way it's going to be as accurate as possible in finding your location. So now let's just create here these functions. We'll say success location, and we're going to have a function called error location. And our success is going to take in the position and we're just going to log that out. So I say console.log position, just like that. And it says, do you want to allow this site to know your code location? I'm going to click allow. And now if I refresh the page, and if we just inspect this page by hitting control shift I, and we come in here, we can see our geolocation has a chords object. And in here we can see our accuracy, our latitude and our longitude. And you'll also notice I have this sensors enabled, which allows me to essentially fake my location for any latitude and longitude I want. I just picked London in this case. And to get to this, you click the triple dots in the Chrome DevTools, go to more tools, and then click on sensors. That's going to open this section up where you can change your actual location. In our case, we changed ours to London. So as you can see, this latitude and longitude coordinate with the latitude and longitude of our faked location. So we know that our latitude and longitude are correctly being picked up. I don't actually live in London, but we're just going to be faking that for this video. So in order to actually tell Mapbox to zoom into a certain location, we can actually pass that location to our creation of a map. So let's just create a function. We're going to call this setup map. And here we're going to pass it a position. For now, we're just going to create that function setup map. And inside of this function, we're going to take a center. This is going to be our latitude longitude center. And in here, we're going to create our map object. And we're going to pass it a center, which is that center. Then what we can do is create our center. And our center is essentially an array that is our latitude longitude. But Mapbox is kind of weird, and it makes you put the longitude first and the latitude second. So we're going to pass it an array. And if you remember right, we have position.chords. We just look over here, position.chords.latitude or dot longitude. And remember, longitude comes first inside of Mapbox. And we can copy that and do latitude. Now we just save this. You'll see that it's going to zoom me into London. But something interesting happens in that the map is super zoomed out. We need to specify a zoom level. So we can play around with different zoom levels. I'm going to put in 14 as our zoom level. We'll see how that looks. If I save, you can see it zooms me into London and it's fairly close. If we change this to 15, it'll be even more zoomed in, which I think is better for, you know, when you're doing directions, you want to be fairly zoomed in to where you are. So right now it's zoomed us in, and if we zoom out a little bit, you can see we're essentially in the dead center of London, which makes sense because that is our current location that we're faking with the Chrome Dev tools. So right now we're handling this success just fine, but what happens if there's an error? We can actually test this inside of Chrome by just going and instead of saying London, we can say location unavailable. This will give us an error. And now if we just refresh our page over here, you're going to notice something interesting. Our map never loads because what's happening is we're getting our current location and we're calling this error location, which never calls setup map. So what I want to do is just set up our map with a default location. In our case, I'm going to use Manchester. So we can just say negative 2.24 and 53.48. This is rough latitude longitude for Manchester. And now if we save this and we zoom out a little bit, you're going to see we're essentially in the center of Manchester, as you can see. So now in order to make this more like Google Maps, what we need to do is we need to add a set of controls so we can zoom in and out our map by clicking on a plus and minus button. And most importantly, we need to add the ability to find directions. And luckily Mapbox has all of this baked in for us. So if we just come over and try to view the documentation of Mapbox, which we can click this icon here and just click on documentation, this will bring us to the documentation and we want the Mapbox GLJS documentation. So we're going to read that documentation because Mapbox has a bunch of different documentation for tons of different objects. And we want to search here for some controls for navigation. So if we search navigation, you can see we have navigation control. And let's read that documentation. Essentially, this controls zoom buttons and a compass. And you can see to create it, we just create a new navigation control, pass us some objects or options, sorry. And here it tells us how to actually use this. So let's just copy this code. Come in here. Let's just obviously update this with const because nobody likes var. And we're going to create a const nav. And here we want to add that to our map. And we're going to not specify a location. 
that'll default us to the top right. Now when we save this, you can see we have these plus and minus buttons, which we can use to zoom in out and use them to rotate our map. We can even you know rotate really fast. Whatever we want to do, we have these controls now that we can use to navigate. And it's as simple as these two lines of code. It really doesn't get much easier than that. And best of all, Mapbox has quite a few plugins, and one of these plugins is built around directions. So if we search for direction, we can see the Mapbox GL directions plugin. Click on this, it's going to bring us to this GitHub page. If we scroll down, you can see exactly how to create one of these Mapbox directions. You can see all we need to do is pass it our access token, and that's pretty much it to get this working. So let's just copy all of this, even the section down here. We just want to paste this after our nav control. We don't need to create our map because we already have a map. We don't really need to worry about units or profile. It'll just default us those. All we need to do is our access token, which if you remember right, we have saved on this object here. So we can just copy this over, paste it in as our access token, and then we can add the directions. We're just gonna add them to the top left. If we save this, go back to Google Maps clone, you're gonna notice it's not quite working as expected. So let's take a look at why. If we just inspect, we should get an error. It says Mapbox directions is not defined. And the reason for that is we need to actually include Mapbox directions. Right here, they're requiring it with NPM, but we want to not do that. We want to use the CDN. So let's just click on this live example down here and see if there's a CDN option. As you can see right here, they have the script tag for the Mapbox directions and the CSS for Mapbox directions. I just want to copy this and paste it after our Mapbox scripts up here. And we want to make sure it's before our actual script tag. So paste that in, fix all the spacing, save that, now if we go back, you can see we can choose a starting location and a destination, and we can choose traffic, driving, walking, cycling, etc. Let's choose London, and we're going to choose Manchester. And there we go. We now have directions from London to Manchester. And if for some reason we are psycho crazy people, we could choose to walk this by clicking the walking directions. And now in only 55 hours, we're going to be in Manchester. And that's all it takes to create a simple Google Maps clone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my full JavaScript course linked down in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day.